So now that we have our React application up and running, we have some functionality to be able to add to our number and to subtract from the number uh, within this app component. Now, this is all good, but you're never really gonna have an application with just a single component. Technically, you could have, I mean, technically you could have with just like a couple hundred lines of code in the same component, but that's just overkill and it'll be confusing to change anything. And the whole point of using components is that you, anytime you're reusing some code, you could abstract that uh, code reuse and turn it into its own component. Now, for this specifically, let's say that we wanted to create this header. So right now, in our app component, we have a header object and we have everything in the header. Uh, so that's not going to be realistic. Instead, we want this header to have the logo um, and then we want to show the header on every single page, aka every single component. And then we want this, how many apps can we build uh, and add and subtracting in its own separate component. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a new component called header. Now, the way they structured the app is this SRC file uh, folder, source folder. Usually I like to name it components uh, versus screens, um, but it's really however you wanna name it. Just be consistent in your naming process. Um, since it's already SRC, we're gonna stick with the SRC. Uh, we're gonna create a new file called, and we're gonna save it called header. JS. And what this is going to do is we're just going to abstract this header uh, into its own code. So at first we're just going to copy and paste this whole app and then we're going to just rename it. It's a lot easier than just writing it off from scratch. So we're going to call it header. Uh, we're going to remove these buttons and we just want it to be this header right here. Uh, we're going to remove the state and the add and minus functionality. So this is a purely a pure view function. And so all it's going to do is just going to render this view. Uh, so we want to keep the import of the logo. We want to keep the import of the CSS. Uh, and then everything else is the same. So we have this header component. And now we want to remove those same items from this app.js. Let's save it. So what happens? Well, this render return function needs to have one single child. So what that means is right now it has three children of p tag, button tag, and two button tags. The way we change that is just wrap it in a div. That's how you solve everything in HTML. You just wrap it in a div. Uh, and then we're going to close the div tag. And now it's a single child. So uh, the P tag button tags are children of the div, and then it's a single child of the render return function. So if we do that, we removed all the logo and the header. So now how do we call that back into this application? So everything still works, but we have no header. So the way we do that is just like we're importing the CSS, uh, we could import SVGs, we could import modules, we could import anything. Um, and we're just going to import the right way. So we're in the same folder, so it's going to be dot slash, and we named it header dot js. So it's still not there. What we have to call it header. So header is not defined. So we can do import, so we have to call it something, we have to import header as, or from, sorry. Mix up the syntax sometimes. So now we have our header. So this is what the page initially looked like, and it just pushed everything down. And that's because the styling uh, has a height of 40, minimum height, I think if we, no, no, that's just the logo. Oh, here we go. So the app header itself is 10 view height. <coughs> so maybe we want to change this to 10. And do this 5. I wouldn't worry too much about this. This is just regular CSS. Uh, we'll go more on this in uh, the actual application. Um, background color, minimum height, uh, and then a lot of flexbox. So we're going to use a ton of flexbox. If you don't know 
uh, Flexbox too much, then no worries. We'll go over it pretty in depth. Um, you could use the same Flexbox CSS that you use in the web application as you do in the iPhone or Android application, which is awesome again. Um, so you reuse a lot of the same things. Um, and now we have our header. So we have, have abstracted our header from the app.js file uh, and then just created our own um, component. So this is what React is based on. It's based on components of each other. So if anytime you're reusing something, like you would a header, if you have multiple pages, in this specific app we're not going to have uh, multiple pages, but uh, almost in any other instance, you're going to have a home page, an about page, maybe if it's a shopping page, you have an e-commerce page, um, and you're going to re want to reuse that header in each one of those. And you're not going to want to just copy and paste this code on each one uh, in case you make a change to the logo or to the, to the text itself, you have to change it in every single file. With a component, you just change it in this single header component. And anytime, anywhere this header component is used, it just automatically gets updated, which is what makes React so flexible, uh, this component uh, type system. Um, some other things of a component lifecycle uh, in React is it has some native functionality. So say we come to this application. Right now we have our state. We have a count of 10. Say we wanted to do something when we first come to the page. Well, we have this component did mount. So like I said before, this function, uh, this function will work as is. This is ES6, or I think it's ES6. Or it might be ES5. I don't really remember. There's too many. ES5, ES6, ES7, they actually all work. Uh, but I wouldn't suggest mixing them up. I've had a bad habit of doing that when they're first transitioning from ES5 to ES6, and then ES6 to ES7. Uh, but I would try to stick with ES7 syntax, and I'll try and point that out along the way. Like I said, ES7 is trying to be more class-based uh, and more explicit. So we see this function, these brackets is calling the function, uh, the arrow brackets is is calling the function uh, this dot add, uh, and then this dot minus, which we uh, defined up here. And so the same thing, this component did not. So this is native to React and will be available on all the platforms. Um, and say we want to do something when we first come. This runs every single time a component is first uh, rendered. So you could say, all right, let's do this is, is app.js. So you can see down here, this is at that JS. Or if you wanted to do run a function, so we could do this dot add. So as soon as the component loads, it renders this is at that JS and it calls a function this dot add. So if there's anything you want to do, as soon as the component is loaded, you could update the state, you could do really anything. Uh, we're going to be using this quite a bit, component did mount. There's other ones of component did update, um, other lifecycle methods of a single component, uh, but this one specifically we're going to be using quite a bit. Uh, a, a good instance of this is say a user comes to our application and we want to check if they're already logged in. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a function called login and instead of someone clicking on it, we're going to put it in component did mount so that as soon as they come to the page, it checks if they're logged in. If they are logged in, then take them to the home page. If not, then keep them on that single page, that front page. So it's just a way to do some functionality when our user first comes to the page. And it's only going to be rendered once that first time the component is rendered. And you could even see that if we wanted to do in this component, we could do this is this is the header. So now this is going to fail because we're calling this dot add. The header component has no idea that a function called this dot add even exists. And so if we remove that, we're going to see oh, what we did. We broke it. Okay. You can see this dot header is called first. 
just because it's higher up in the component, then this.fjs, and then it's adding. So we can see in order, it's calling this function, uh, this is the header, then it's doing this is fjs, and then this is calling add, which is console logging adding. So you can see all three of them in a row in the order of operations that they're being run. So say we do want to add this.add function into the header for some reason. Um, this is probably not a good example, but there is other reasons why you'd want to call a function in the header. Say maybe you want to initiate a modal or something to log in. I don't know. Uh, so the way we do that is by passing props or passing props within functions. So you're passing data from one function to another. Like I said, this dot state is only available to this component, which is the app component. The header component has no idea that what the state is of the app component in the header component unless we explicitly pass it through. So we either pass in a function or as a, an actual data point or the number. So as an example, let's just pass in, we're going to pass in a number. Actually, you can name it whatever you want, as long as you call it the correct way. So we're going to do test. And we're going to pass in this.state.count. So we want to know what the count is in the header component. The way we do that is if we do this.props. So this is that props is passing props or passing data from one component to the other. If we do, we'll just create another. We're going to do this dot props dot, and we're not going to do dot count. We're going to do dot test because this is the prop. Uh, so we could name this whatever, but we have to call it the right way in header.js. So we do this dot props dot test and p tag. And anytime we do that, now it's updating in both the header and the app.js component. So, like I said, you can name it whatever. I would test as a terrible example, but I just wanted to make sure it doesn't have to be called the same thing. So you can name it count. And now we're still referring to test, so we just have to update this to count. And now this will work. So you can name it whatever you want as long as you refer to the right thing. I would be explicit as you can when referring to different types of data, whether it's a function or just a single data object or number versus a string. Um, there's no, it won't break anything if you don't do that, but it, for your own sanity uh, and knowing where everything's going and how you're passing data through each component, um, it's just a lot easier in the long run. Um, and so this is one way to pass data from one component to the other. Now, if we wanted to do that, with, say we have like 50 different components. Uh, in our application, we actually do have about 20 different components. So you're not going to want to do this for every single piece of data. You're not going to pass in a user's name and email in all this, in, or a photo in all this uh, passing the props. So we're actually going to leverage Redux, which is an application-wide state. So instead of having state in just this uh, component of app and the header component and have no idea what the state is, then we're going to use Redux instead, which has a global state, so every single component can call that same state. So you can see, like, even if we do passing props works, but say if we did this.state.count, if you thought that state had was available in the header, well, it's just going to fail because there is no state. So this state is going to be completely different than the app.js state. So now they're completely independent. They might be called the same thing, but they're completely independent unless you explicitly say through the props or through uh, Redux that the components have no idea about each other. So that's what Redux will help us do. Uh, and then we'll go really in depth in that because that gets a little complex, but it makes it so much easier to handle data throughout all the pages of our application. 
And so this is our React application. Uh, in the next couple of videos, we're going to get started with actually coding our app and getting everything up and running with Expo and React Native. See ya.